Um, well, so what I really like is that I honestly don't know, like some guests I know, some I've met and have talked to, and then like you and I really don't know anything about each other, which is fun, but we're part of a couple of the same groups, one in particular. So this will be fun because it'll be like getting to know you along with everybody who listens. You want to just tell me what you're doing now and how you got to where you are now. Other than the big thing was I got laid off in December 20, December 16, 2021. So that's when, because that's six months prior, I started my second business and then I got laid off. And then that was the, I all of last year I spent really understanding how to be an entrepreneur and building just we we think that you can just be an entrepreneur I thought the whole time I really was because in 2019 I started my first business and it was in 2021 that I really said you know what I know that there's more I don't like the VA stuff and so when I started becoming a coach and I was getting on clients I was working a full-time job and doing working with the clients and then I got laid off and it was all about the clients and about the business, but it was really shree because now I was diving deep into being an entrepreneur and understanding what that is. It's different because you don't have anything to fall back on. You just have, you just got to keep going. And then you realize, oh my gosh, I'm the one holding myself back. I'm the one who's not pushing it. I know I can do it, but I listen to the thoughts of it's okay. You can do it tomorrow. So do you think that you'd, and I think I know the answer to this question, but do you think you'd be where you're at if you hadn't lost your job? Not, yeah, I probably wouldn't. Maybe I would have left six months later. I, I don't think I would have left and December, I would have left six months later. So what led up to you losing your job? How did that come to be? I think that it was because they really, not they. So I started posting on LinkedIn. In September of 2021, I did my first LinkedIn Live during my lunch. And I really tried to change the profile so it didn't show that I was under the company that I was working with. However, it's still, they said it flagged that I wasn't going live under their company. And so the head of it, the director of HR didn't like that. So my boss just said, you just want to make sure you don't go live using that profile or change. So that's what I ended up doing is I rechanged everything or rechanged. I changed everything in the profile. So it didn't show them. However, they all were always looking at my profile and there are times I won't sit there and say it was all them. Some of the videos I created were wild during work during my lunchtime, but still it's the perception is reality. However, a lot of it was just part of it. It was my exposure on LinkedIn and part of it was restructuring and the, the division I was in just wasn't making the money. So they just let people go. Yeah. Cause I was the, so in that, in, since April, 2019, we have been letting go of people. And then this round in 2021, I was the second round. I was like the last round for 2021. And then again, they started in March, letting go of people. Wow. Okay. Yeah. What made you get into coaching to begin with? Coaching found me. Yeah. That's a really funny, fun question. I didn't know. I was just helping people, entrepreneurs to get on camera. In 2020, nobody was doing videos. Nobody was going live. Yeah. And those who were the ones who said, I see the way first, and they jumped on it. And I was one of them. I was coaching people. I was like, okay, look, we're going to go live. There's no other option. There's no pre-recording. This is how we do it. And they would talk to me before they would go live. And that was one of the mandatory things. I had to talk to you. So now I'm walk. I'm talking to you when you are calm and collected. And I'm understanding when you are nervous because your voice, 
the way you move, how you act are different. So I understood when you were calm. So when we would go live, I would be able to know how to bring you back to that story when we were talking. And I realized later, hey, I've been coaching these people for a while. And it was 40 people before I realized, okay, this is what I should be doing. Wow, that's a lot of people. Yes, it is a lot of people. I didn't know. I didn't know. Here I am. I'm just trying to prep them for the live interview. But really, I was coaching them and saying, how this is how you talk to the camera. This is how you show up. These are the questions, how to prepare yourself. And even to the point where my whenever I brought on a guest, especially in the first few episodes, I would get feedback. Hey, you need to tell your guests this. You need to tell your guests have better Wi-Fi. How can they have better Wi-Fi? You need to tell your guests how to have better sound. You need to coach your guests and let them know where to look. You need to coach your guests and tell them how to have a proper background. Like these are things that people were telling me. I had no idea. Nobody was coaching me. There was no community It was all about reaching out to the ones that I knew. And some of them, I had no idea. We just met because I was going live on Instagram. I was connecting with people. I was asking the DMs, what should I be doing? How should I be marketing? What would get your attention? Even to the point that I had people after a certain guest, they would tell me, you need to be asking these types of questions. So I would go into the DMs of many of my followers and ask them, what are the kind of questions that you would like to see to help them? And eventually it started to become, okay, now we are becoming a community. We're becoming friends. And that's how I was able to learn how to interview guests. I went, I knew how to interview guests from being a sales rep, but now I really understood how to, and I'm still learning. Like, I I don't think I'm the greatest in the world, but I know that where I am today was not where I was when I first started. So what is your area now? Is this what you're still coaching people in or what are you, what do you focus on now? I still focus on helping entrepreneurs get on camera and even corporate professionals, because after I started getting on the camera, when I was still working the nine to five, I had more confidence in myself and how I presented to others. I did, I will look back and I played small. I never really positioned myself to try to level up. And that was because I just didn't want to be, it just wasn't what I wanted. Now, as an entrepreneur, you can't do that. You have to put yourself out there. You have to play big. And by, because of that, As I am coaching from one-on-one, some of my clients are like, oh, I don't want to learn how to go live. I don't want to learn how to do the marketing. I don't want to learn how to get the guests. I want you to do it. I don't, I just want to show up. And that's exactly what I do. My team and I, we produce the live streaming and live streaming podcasts by taking care of the backstage, getting the guests prepared, getting the questions prepared, writing the copy, even the social media management. So it's a driver to your show. And it's also a funnel to get leads because if you look at live streaming or live streaming podcasts, that's what they are. It's just a funnel. When you're talking to somebody, you're telling them, hey, I have a podcast. And now people are intrigued. Oh, you have a podcast. Yes. And these are the type of guests that I bring on. And these are the topics that I talk about. Now you've got somebody who wants to listen. So they're going to check your episodes out. If you have it in video, especially video, now they're going to check out, oh, what are you talking about? Now they can see, you know what you're talking about. Then they see your posts. Then they look at your freebies your website, if you have blogs and you're posting videos, now they're saying, okay, you're taking them through the customer journey. Now they're ready to book with you and they've built enough trust. And the next step is a lot easier than if you're having only one type of content that you're posting. Yeah. What's your favorite part of that? My favorite part is, okay, I'll say, The least favorite part is (laughs) (laughs) the least favorite part is when the technical difficulties hit and that's always going to happen. 
that's just part of it. But it's my favorite part because it allows me to go back because so many times I've had technical difficulties and walking the guests through and saying, hey, it's going to be okay. We're going to be fine. Keep the show rolling. This is what we do. And now I'm coaching the my client in the background saying, it's going to be okay. We're going to be fine. Just keep on talking. So it's my least favorite, but it's one of my one of the places where I really thrive because those are the moments that you don't have control of, but you have control of yourself. I know I find myself in situations where the technical difficulty thing is happening and I'm not the one hosting the meeting or the shit, whatever it is. I instantly get this, oh no, feeling for the host. And, but then I also get like very curious, okay, how's this person going to handle this moment? And I want to learn from that moment because it's inevitable the technical difficulties coming and sure enough, it'll be on a larger stage than probably just a one-on-one with a podcast guest. It'll be like the first meeting where you've got 10 people or something like that. So I always try to watch how people handle it. And I think at this point too, we've all been in plenty of these types of meeting scenarios. So people have gotten used to it, but I think when you're wanting to do a good job at something, it'll still throw a person off. It is. It will throw a person off, especially when you're taking a concept from paper. This is something you've been dreaming about. Now you're talking to somebody, talking to my team, and we're helping you put together your thoughts. Who is this podcast for? Who are you trying to speak to? What kinds of guests are you trying to bring in to bring on? And how are you tapping into their audience? And why would you want to tap into their audience? Is this a potential lead for you? Is this not a potential lead for you? And then figuring out, do you want to do by yourself a podcast by yourself, or do you want to have multiple people? And once you figure that out and then you bring it to life, that's the coolest part. But then if the first episode is filled with technical difficulties, it can deter somebody. And so having a support system there helps you to get through that. Because sometimes you think, why would I want to invest in this when I can do it all by myself? Nobody's stopping you from doing it by yourself. You absolutely can. It's uh, it's looking at, is this what your business is? Are you, is it worth your time to sit and figure out who should be your next guest? How should the setup be? How to tackle the technical difficulties? Or would it be best if you used your time getting clients, talking to them and helping them and then just sort outsourcing this to somebody else who knows what they're doing. Let them take care of it. If something happens, you just have to say yes or no. And that's it. I know. And I found even just starting this podcast, it isn't what people think. It's not as easy as people think. And it's, there's a lot that goes into it. And then you really find out how hands-on or hands-off you want to be and who just wants to do the conversing and gets turned off by all of the technical stuff, the editing and all of that. And that could deter somebody who has a really great message and would have a really great podcast from doing a podcast because if you don't like it and it, and you don't want to do it, it'll make somebody stop. It'll make somebody quit. It does. And statistically, if you look at it, a lot of podcasts stop about eight to 20, maybe even 60. But that's because either a co-host leaves or you got a promotion or the business becomes to a point where you can't focus on this anymore. Then it then you lose traction. You put in a lot of work to get where you are. Simple things that you were doing to get that traction you got to put to the side because you're focused on other things. Even myself, I have to think about, okay, as I grow my team, grow my client base, I too have to think, what are systems that I can put in place so I can continue to still do what helped me get these clients to begin with. And so if the podcast is what got you the clients, the podcast should continue, but why should it be placed for you to do it? Now you can say, you know what? Let me give this to somebody else and let them run it so that I can just focus on this. And even the social media management part, it's like thinking about that because 
we're now seeing that Instagram is a way to funnel to larger live, longer live streaming content. So that could be YouTube. That could be your podcast. You can have the clips there. But again, it goes back. Do you really have the time to sit and post everywhere? Or would you rather just have somebody? And it's always thinking those things. There's a really big makeup company that I love. It's called Morphe. And one of the things that they saw was they were spending money in things that weren't making them money or giving them the return that they were looking for. And that's what you have to think about too. Even if you outsource, if you're not making the money, it doesn't make sense. So I always say, if you're going to bring in a team, think about the long term. Don't think about the short term because in the short term, you're not going to see the results right away. But in the long term, you will. So bringing on an agency like myself coming in, I always say the first 90 days is a really good way to see how this is going to work. Then extend it out to a year because truthfully in a year you will see. I can tell you my first year of going live, that's when I started to see so many opportunities open up. I went from being not a published author to a best-selling author to having many opportunities to guest speak for certain events. I've even had a new business come about from it. So give yourself a chance to see what can happen by going live, having this podcast be in place. Now, after a year, you sit down and you say, you know what, this isn't what I want to be doing. Then that makes sense. Right. My head's spinning. It's (laughs) because I'm thinking of all of the areas where so now I want to pick your brain, love learning. And I can see myself though, down the road, eventually offloading some of the things to an agency, like, like yours, because some of it is, it's the time consuming part of it. And then there's also the part of fear. Okay. This is a commitment. I have to pay every month. Will I make the money? You will. It will come back to you, but you can't expect it to be like, I love those get rich and get, make six figures in 90 days. We know that's it's possible, but how much work are you willing to put in? So it's the same thing. It's an investment and it will come back in return. You will see the fruition of it as opportunities start to open for you. I just, it's, can I say that it's going to be overnight? No. But you will see results in 90 days and you will see results in one year. And you continue to do it, you're going to see even more. By continuously going live and by getting on, bringing on guests and learning from them, I've been able to start a new business. I now have four street live streaming shows and built an agency from it and have a team. And this is just from starting in 2020. So you can see that it wasn't overnight, but it was something that progressed. I've seen others who started their podcast, focused on it, built a membership, have sponsorships, and are ma- and that's their living. It's so possible to do it, but you just got to know where do you want to focus on and why you want to focus on it. So do you help people when they're wanting, they start out and they think they just want to do this podcast thing. And then they realize, wait, I can monetize it. What do I, what it, what is a freebie? How do I even know what do you help people realize those things within themselves too? Yes. There's when, by working with me, I will always say, okay, this is what it is to work with me, but we, I also plant the seeds. Let's think about who would be a potential advertiser for you. Now, an advertiser can be somebody who pays you monetary, could be they give you stuff for free, or it could be a, an exchange of services. So you may not get paid all the time, but it's something that happens where maybe you need their coaching and they need your advertising to get more leads. Then you have a partnership right there. So we're always so caught in like, it has to be monetary, not necessarily. You can find different ways. And sometimes even the ones that are say, okay, exchange of services, when they start to see that they're funneling business, they will end up paying. Interesting. 
It's because they're scared too, right? There's a level of, will this really work? Yeah. And if you're consistent, yes. Because also you have to think about you and you're listening right now. Somebody is going to give you money. And after 10 episodes, you stop. Will they get their money back? Yeah. You got to think about that for them. So we always think about ourselves, but we also, when it's, when you're in the position and you have a voice, you want to make sure you take care of the people who are asking you saying, Hey, help me build a voice to what I have. Yeah, I guess I hadn't even really put much thought into that part of it too. It's if you're willing to sign on the dotted line for somebody else, you got to longevity is key. It is. I never, I really, I shouldn't say I never, I really don't like short-term. I really like long-term relationships, even with clients that I've worked from two years ago. And now I still keep in touch with them. Why? Because they just weren't, they're not just a number. They're more than that. I got to connect with them. And recently I had one of my clients, she lost her husband and I, I still reached out and I said, Hey, I'm here for you, whatever you need. And that's just the type of person I know we can't do that for everybody, but some of us do. <laughs> I may not talk to you every day, but I do reach out just to see how you're doing. So that's the type of person I am. Whether you work with me for one call or you work with me for a year, I'm going to keep in touch. And I'm also the type of person Based on the clients that I've worked with, we start small. You'll probably meet somebody who's, you need to have X, Y, Z. And I'm always, how about we just start right here? Let's focus here. Let's get some results and then move to the next, work that and then move to the next. Because when you start to see that, then you feel good about yourself. It's like those small goals. For example, you're trying to lose weight. When you see you lost five pounds, you want to go to 10 pounds. When you lose 10 pounds, you want to move to 15 pounds and you get more motivated. I follow that same type of philosophy. Start small and build big. Incremental achievements. Yes. Yeah. Do you ever feel burnout or are you, do you get the sense that like your soul is fed to the point where burnout doesn't exist for you or just certain oh, no. areas? Burnout is real. I hit burnout last year. So to avoid hitting burnout this year, regardless of how many clients I have, I will keep myself to a to-do list of four, two to four things. If I at least do, if I do all four, that's great. If I do half, that's great. If I do one, that's great because I'm not going to put that pressure. There are certain things you can do five minutes engage I can't be I can't engage today as long as I would like to but hey I connected with five people my goal was to connect my goal is to connect with five people every day on LinkedIn I did that we're done because to me because as for me that's a very simple task and it's an income producing activity so I will do it and get it done that's one thing that's always on the list done if it's Okay, we need to write the caption for the client's post. Done. What about my post? Now I got to think about my post. So if it's if I'm too tired, I'm not going to post it. And then I'm aware of timings, but again, we it goes back to building a system and then executing that. How do you stay educated and on top of making reels and all of the apps that are out there for making these little clips? And how do you stay on top of all of that, the trends? So I read a lot of what's going on video marketing. I also have certain coaches that I work with specifically. I'm in groups. So monthly membership groups, I have one for mindset. That's really important for me. Then there's one for understanding copy and understanding LinkedIn. I've got actually two of those. And then there's one about videos. So I'm always looking at what's trending. Plus, my clients help me stay on top of stuff. I have a social media manager. I have a relationship coach. So I'm always trying to find how can I help them? So by helping them, I'm reading articles I'm like, hey, how about you add this? And that's how I'm able to see, hey, this is trending. This is not. I'm paying attention to YouTube 
videos or the shorts mm -hmm. and TikTok videos to see what are people doing and how can I implement that for my clients? And it does, and I'm not expecting anybody to go from, they have the best videos after 21 days or 12 weeks. It's more, I'm so comfortable creating this video. I know how to add an overlay and I know how to add captions. I'm happy. And now I know what I can ask my editor, if that makes sense, because those small things will lead to more to your client. Some of my clients that have worked with me, I had one that went viral. She had 2.1 million views, but it was because she was talking about the death of her husband. So we never know what's going to make a video go viral, but there are there is a sauce, a formula that will attract your potential client. And every video coach is going to show you how to do it, but each one has their own take on it. So I'm always going to tell you one way, and that's just be you and show different parts of you in different forms. Like maybe you are, if you like acting, bring that out. If you like cooking, show that. If you like just walking every day with your dog, make that a series. If work, if you were thinking about, wow, I don't know if I want to do all this dancing and stuff. I don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, I'll show you some really cool tricks to help you with your videos. And if you want to do that, but if you want to work with someone who's going to show you how to go viral with reels, how to go viral on TikTok, they're out there as well. Yeah. I actually never even had a TikTok until I started a podcast. <laughs> I was told TikTok is a pretty substantial place to be. I still haven't done anything on there yet, but it is it's a good place people get exposure to you and they get to talk to you a lot of brands are taking their ad revenue away from google and bringing it to tiktok because that's where people are going they're searching on tiktok so if you're watching a trend you're seeing you don't want to always just be ranked on google you want to be somewhere where you can be found and the other tip I would add is understanding SEO words and how you rank. Because people are always like, well, I want to rank. If you put Sri Mahabir, video marketing producer, you're going to find me. And you're going to, and I'm, my LinkedIn is going to become up, is going to come up first. And some of my TikTok videos show. So I can't say that everything that I'm going to share is going to work. But I can say the more you put yourself out there, the more times that people have access to, they look your name up, they're going to talk to you and have patience. It's taken me this about a year for people to actually reach out, like actually reach out in my DMs and say, hey, I want to work with you. I would get a glimpse of it, but the but nobody tells you, oh, it's going to take about a year. It can't take, it can get shorter, but. I want to be honest with everybody. It took a year. Now people are reaching out to me, literally like people who've known me for a while are messaging me. They have my actual phone number. So they're texting me or they're DMing me or they're emailing me like, Hey, what are you doing? I saw your last post, which you're now, you have an agency. I want to work with you. How do I work with you? It's like, you've built that credibility too. There's comfort on there and knowing, okay, she's obviously been able to maintain this career path. She's obviously doing something right and is trustworthy. And I think that probably comes across too. I like your approach to remaining authentic. Just be you. I think a lot of that can be felt through a video or a post because something feels rushed or it feels like I've never seen that person in that kind of, what is that? It's, some of that stuff can just, it comes across and the message is lost. It, it does. And so I teach my clients, take yourself on this journey. I don't even know who you are. And you're trying to explain to me what it is you do. Break it down in such a way that now I can remember what you do each step of the way. So you're telling me your name who you are and what you do. 
Now you're showing me something about what you, your knowledge. Now you're answering probably an objection that I'm going to have, like you're too expensive, or I need to speak to the decision maker. It might be your dog, your cat, the broom, whoever it is. (laughs) And you're taking them through this journey. When you talk about one point each time, it makes it easier. I've made the mistake where I would want to talk about everything and it led to nothing. So understanding that you need to have one topic per video, one focus point makes it easier. And it's a consistent message. How? Because I'm involving video in some way, even if it's an inspirational post, such as I lost my job, uh, the anniversary post about losing my job, I still talked about being a video coach, even though it wasn't the focal point. Then there was the post about reintroducing myself. I have everything that I, I am a video marketing producer. And then there's the next post that's about what are the objections? And many people are funny about it because many different industries can relate. Many of us have the same objection. Maybe it's not about video, but it's about, oh, the money, I need to talk to my spouse. I need to think about it, all of those. And then there's the, what are some trends that you see? People love to numbers when you add numbers to your videos people love when you show an article like here's the latest news i remember i did a video about the latest trend when tiktok beat out google for the first time in search i had that article that video did really well because people were shocked oh i bet yeah even just you telling me that people are going from google to tiktok i didn't even know that i'm not surprised though but I didn't know that. A friend of mine works for a very not notable fashion company for young teenage women, girls, women. And she was telling me they were moving from Google to TikTok. And I was really in shock. I said, you're not, and they're like, no Google. We'll be found on Google, but no Google. Wow. That's incredible. The power okay. changed. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. And it's interesting because social media is not going away. TikTok's not going away. And every generation that comes up, we have, our kids have phones in their hands younger and younger all the time. And Google isn't where they're going. (laughs) No, but YouTube is still there. YouTube is a beast on its own. And you can, if you're thinking about getting on YouTube, definitely do have a plan in mind. What are you going to, how often are you going to be on there? What are you going to be talking about and who is it for? And the rest you'll figure out along the way. I've been hearing a lot more about YouTube. Everybody get monetized. Once you get monetized, then you make money. So that's a whole nother stream of income right there. Yeah. It's interesting because when you're not part of any of these things, you just don't know. And Mm -hmm. the doing this podcast, the idea came to me two years ago. But it was just simply for sharing stories about women and transformation and success and inspirational podcast type of thing. But then as I got to looking at one day, I was Googling side hustles and on Pinterest looking at side hustle things. And I'm like, you can make videos for YouTube and get paid. What? <laughs> Didn't even know. It's funny once you start looking the out of the box to be able to think out of the box and know that some of these things that you think about actually do exist ways of making money. I just, I'm shocked and I'm encouraged. I think it's really cool. It's amazing what you can do as the side hustle phenomenon grows, as they say, even LinkedIn is talking about that. We're going to see more people have nine to fives and we're going to see more have a side hustle and they're going to be using video, social media, whether it's use, posting on social media or using it on their website or how they're driving people to their business, but we're going to see more of that. And there's nothing wrong. If you're not a full-time entrepreneur, it's fine. 
You got to do what's uncomfortable for you. We don't know your life circumstances, but we do know that everybody is looking to build their stability. We saw with 2020, people were losing their job. So imagine if you had already built, let's say you have a Facebook group like I have, and then you have your YouTube page, and then you have your side hustle, and maybe together it makes the income the income that you make with your full-time job. But if you were to lose your full-time job, you're still going to be okay. And that's what we're seeing more and more of that people are trying to build that cushion in different forms. Yeah, I think there's a large percentage of people trying to build that cushion. So when the day comes that they're ready to even quit the nine to five, the quitting of the nine, nine to five becomes the catalyst of the ultimate success then for the side hustle. It is. And some may never, some may just never quit their full-time job. They love it. And we should all be okay because there's not one way or the other. It's really what's going to make your, or what is comfortable living to you? If you can define that and you are happy with that, that's fine. For me, comfortable living is just being able to, for example, pay for my mom's services for, let's say she wants to work with a coach. Right now I can't, but I know in due time I will. Same thing with my daughter. Or I want to go and see her. I can just pay for the ticket and go. Or if I wanted to go out to eat, I can go out to eat. So these are, it's not about, oh, I got to have this seven figure business. It's more, I just want to be able to live a comfortable lifestyle. Yeah. Financial freedom. Absolutely. For me, for, freedom is my thing. That's my driver. And it's money is so tied to freedom. If you don't, if you don't have, in my circumstance, if you don't have enough, then you have to have a job, and then, and that's that takes away some freedom. When I got laid off, the first thing I did was I took my four hundred one k, and I paid everything off. I own my car. I don't have any student loans. Pay the credit cards. Now for the business, I invested into myself and my business. So what I have now is based off of the business. I'm not going to try to put more onto it. I'm going to pay that off. But technically speaking, if I couldn't make the car payment, it's okay because I own my car. If the house that I'm in, thankfully, with God's help, the house is paid off my parents' house. But if it got to that point, I'd sleep in my car and I would rent out this. God forbid my parents, something happened to my parents. I would rent out the house and I would just live in my car because- the house is paid for. The car is owned. Yeah. I can have renters come in and out. I'm living below, I saw something posted. I think it was Ed Milet actually that posted it today. It's don't spend money that you don't have. Yeah. And it's, you can't live, you can't live the lifestyle that you can't actually fund. No, you can't. So then, living low is what I've been doing. I bootstrapped since 2017. I really bootstrapped even more as I was starting my business, as I got serious about the business. And then last year I had bootstrapped even more, but I really wanted to invest in myself, work with the coaches, understand branding, understand the nuances of LinkedIn and just things that now I'm so glad I did that I can go into this year knowing with confidence, I'll be okay for a while. That is so good. If I don't work with the coach for even eight months, I'll be okay. Can you see yourself working with coaches? Not anytime Um, soon. Okay. So let me short term. No, I don't see anybody. I don't want to, but in the future, yes, because I do believe we do need to level up Mm -hmm. and having to continuously to work with some work with someone doesn't allow you a chance to apply what you've learned. So all of the coaches that I worked with last year, I didn't have actual results to show and I always felt bad. But now that I'm in this year, the second year of the business, being a full-time entrepreneur, I actually have results. Like I'm sharing with them like, hey, I was able to do this and this. That is so cool. Yes. I know I, that's one of the things too that I like, 
I've reached, I think part of it's age too. I realized, I think I've done, there's a certain amount that you can do on your own. You can learn on your own, but then and when you can recognize the people that are ahead of you doing the things that you can picture yourself doing, then it's okay. I, now I need a coach. I need somebody. I need the accountability. I need the secrets. There's probably some secrets. I need the connections, the group of people, the mindset, all of those things that come along with a coach that don't current currently exist within my everyday life. It's just, a, it's like going back to school. It is. I went back to school for a year. I paid quite a bit of money for it. It's <laughs> worth it. Yeah. Now, I do understand memberships. So for listening and you're wondering, why would I want to join a membership? It gets you to see what it would be like to work with a coach, but it also gives you access to other people that you normally wouldn't get to. So you can foster relationships. And those are really good ways to see if this is the group you want to be a part of. So I always go into a group with the mindset, I will be here for 90 days. If I don't see anything coming from it, I'm going to leave. There's no point in staying somewhere if you're not able to make the meetings, if you're not connecting with people. And it's hard, especially if you know the person that has the membership. But you also have to look at you supported them. Now it's time for you to keep on going. And so right now I'm doing memberships. So I'm in a few memberships and I like it because because I'm learning. But just like I'm telling everybody else after 90 days, I don't see what I want. I'm out. So for anybody who is listening and what the heck is a membership? So basically a membership is something that you pay. And every month there's typically a certain number of times that everybody within that membership gets together. I'm part of a couple of them as well. That's how you and I met. And the difference that I'm noticing is some of them just have the once a week powwow type thing, but then others have budget trainings, prayer sessions, different things. And would you add anything else to what memberships do that you've experienced? I would also add membership is another form of residual income. So if you were to think about what can I provide a group of individuals, who are they for? What are they, what are they going to get if they pay instead of paying for Netflix, they're paying for you. Mm -hmm. And how does this funnel in leads to working one-on-one -on -one with you? So you could have, okay, for four weeks, I'm going to allow people to connect with each other. I'm going to build using, you can either use Slack, you can use Facebook, you can use, there's so many different platforms out there to build your community. Then when you bring them in, you could have, let's say a channel just for, if you're using Slack, you can have a channel for post reviews or mindset tips, and you can make it like that and then have this two-part session of a class that's once a month. There are some people that do that. Then there are some who actually think about, okay, I have women entrepreneurs or men entrepreneurs. What is it that they really need? Asking them the questions and then providing those resources. Maybe it's workshops, weekly workshops. Maybe it's group chat and then talking in the group chat. Like, you can create this membership how and what best is for your community. I have my free Facebook community. And so I'm just, I go live once a week. I'm doing networking events. I'm, allow, I'm encouraging the community to go live, post their videos. So they feel like they have somewhere that they can put their video, get feedback, and then also not get shamed for putting their video out because that can happen. You feel a certain kind of way, but this is a type of community where we foster and encourage you to continue to post, to continue to go live so that when you actually go live on your platforms, you know what you're doing. You don't feel like, I don't know what I'm doing, what to say. Got it. Okay. So give, how do people find you? What is the name of your company? How do people find you? So the best way to find me is on LinkedIn, Shri Mahabir, or you can find me on TikTok under the same name or Facebook. 
And I know that Charlotte is going to be sharing my link to my Facebook community. So I encourage you to join in. Yeah. And this is for somebody who's afraid to get on camera or who is on camera, but wants to learn more tips, ready to level up on their live streaming skills, or even wants tips to, they have a current show, but want to know how to get better in it. Definitely come and join in. Definitely. And we'll put all of that information in the show notes too, so people can, they don't have to go searching all different places. They'll have direct <laughs> access to you. Yes. And I would highly encourage you guys. Shri is so encouraging. And as you can all hear, knowledgeable, personable, actually cares. Obviously we all like to make money, but she actually really likes to help too. So I would definitely encourage reaching out and finding her is there any, any last advice? Last words of advice is that accept that failure is part of the process and embrace it and understand it's just a lesson. We hate failure, but failure is your best friend. So when you look at failure as a blessing, you will continue to do, take that next step, continue to keep going forward when things aren't working because now you're like okay this didn't work let's try it this way and you'll keep finding different solutions different outside of the box ideas that you never even thought of because you just kept going failure is an indication that you are doing something it is and then it's evidence that you will make it through a failure and you'll get up I yep. love that Love that. I thank you so much for your time. You have my gears turning and I'm so appreciative and I'm so glad to know you. And I think outside of here too, I'll be connecting with you more and yeah. Thank Definitely. you so much. Thank you for having me on oh, and allowing me to share my story to all of your listeners. Thank you. You enjoy the rest of your evening. You too. Will do. And we'll chat again soon.